To conclude EX4 Breakdown Review, these would be the cards that I felt that had a miscellaneous category. While some cards could have been in other episodes, this felt more appropriate in terms of sequencing them. But enough small talk, it's time to review the last 10 cards of the set. First up, Victory Greymon. This is this Digimon's second printing, and for the Super Rare of Red, it's not terrible. When Digivolving, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with 6,000 DP or less. For each Digimon your opponent has in play, add 2,000 DP to the maximum. Meaning if your opponent has one Digimon in play, it goes up to 8,000. Two Digimon, it's 10,000. And three is the sweet spot to delete almost any level 6 Digimon. Also, all turns once per turn when an opponent's Digimon is deleted, if you have a Tamer in play, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with the highest DP. You're telling me if I delete any small body, that I could potentially be deleting their biggest body? Neat. Now, if only Greymon cards had added DP buffs like the Gilmon line. The potential double removal is good, but the 4-cost Digivolution cost makes it a little hard to justify. That being said, BT7 Metal Greymon could be very well used in conjunction with this Digimon. Unfortunately, the Agumon, Geo Greymon, and Rise Greymon don't do enough to keep it on your turn, as it requires you to have Tamers to suspend first. So unless you're using Marcus Damon to Eve up for free, well, I could see why. It might be worth it to try out. Who knows? Z Garurumon lets you return a level 4 or lower Digimon to your opponent's hand. But if they have 8 or more cards, you get to return a level 6 or higher. Also, all turns, when an effect adds a card to your opponent's hand, if you have a Tamer in play, return one of your opponent's level 3 Digimon to its owner's hand. Now, this is all related to Gaumon's support. While the when Digivolving effect is nice again, it's hard to justify the 4 cost Digivolution. Luckily, like I said, Gaumon and Galgamon can each gain you a memory to make this Digivolution just to memory. Agumon Expert also makes a return as a yellow Digimon. For 3 memory or 0 to evo into, it has an opponent's once per turn effect that when your opponent plays a Digimon, by revealing a Digimon card with the same level as that Digimon from your hand, place the revealed card at the top of your security stack face down. I personally haven't seen this card in any meta decks, and with the fact that yellow tends to run more options than Digimon, it's hard to justify putting anything into the security. Funny enough, even with Medieval Gallantmon, it's in the wrong colors. Gold Vidramon is the newest armored form to make an appearance and digivolves from Vmon for 2 memory. It has your default armor purge trait and a when digivolving effect that dings one of your opponent's Digimon for minus 2000 DP for the turn. If you have a blue or yellow tamer in play or a card with armor and its traits in your trash, it also stuns one of your opponent's Digimon with 6000 DP or less from attacking or blocking. All Force players can now rejoice, with another Vidramon to go into, and it'll definitely be run because it's a 2 cost Digivolution from Vmon. But because of this, you may have to pull back on Floodgates, as this Digimon can only Digivolve from yellow level 3s. Gaiomon also makes its second appearance. However, its stats and costs are now identical to Black War Greymon. When Digivolving, delete one of your opponent's Digimon with a play cost of 13 or more. If no Digimon was deleted by this effect, trash the top card of your opponent's security. End of turn, if you have a Tamer in play, you may Digivolve this Digimon into a card with Gaiomon in its name and a play cost of 13 or more from your hand without paying its Digivolution cost and ignoring Digivolution requirements. Meaning you can now go back into BT9 Gaiomon to Blitz and de-Digivolve, check to security, and reboot. This Gaiomon feels like a brief stepping stone to do some board cleanup before going back into aggressive checks. One unfortunate thing is this Digimon cannot Digivolve from Black or Greymon, but it's a small price to pay for potentially Hades forcing your opponent of all their Tamers, then deleting a big Digimon with 13,000 DP, before going into the other Gaiomon to de-Digivolve and Blitz. Right? Right? This is a weird ruling. Shadow Seraphimon is a new Digimon that is black and yellow and Digivolves off of Seraphimon for one. I don't see why you would, but I guess it's an option? Opponent's turn when a card is removed from your security stack, D-Digivolve one on one of your opponent's Digimon. Note, this isn't once per turn. On deletion, recovery one, and then one of your opponent's Digimon gets minus 4000 DP for the turn for each card in your security stack. Meaning at three security, you could delete almost any level six Digimon. Fake Agumon Expert also returns, with an opponent's once per turn effect that lets you trash one Digimon card of the same level as one of your opponent's Digimon that is deleted to draw two. 
This card is highly situational considering your opponent's Digimon must be deleted and you must have the same level in your hand. I personally don't recommend this card, and this card is bulk in my mind. But now it's time to finish things up with option cards. Trident Gaia is the new Gaia Force that deletes a Digimon with the highest DP. If a Digimon with 13,000 DP or more was deleted by this effect, trash the top card of your opponent's security. In some ways, this card is really good on not just your turn, but your opponents if they attack into it. If specific boss monsters are deleted, it might be enough to trash the one security you wanted to avoid before promoting and attacking for gain. Full Metal Blaze feels like a souped up supreme cannon but the cost feels like Kokaitis Breath, returning two of your opponent's level 4 or lower Digimon. But if your opponent had 8 or more cards in hand, you could also get to return a level 6 or higher Digimon to the bottom of its owner's deck. Early game, this card wouldn't be great, but late game and in security, oof. The last option card is Gaia Reactor, a 6 cost black option card that lets each player choose one Digimon and play with the highest play cost, then delete all Digimon other than the chosen Digimon. For wider building boards, it's honestly not terrible. Heck, in a D Brigade deck, it might be funny to nuke your own BT4 Commander Mons only to replace them with more. In general, there are a lot of miscellaneous cards that didn't fit a specific category, but a lot of them are also very powerful. While not all will find a home, I suggest that any of the cards you don't use or fall below the $1 threshold to be used to get other players into the game. Because they're fairly cheap, it'll help newer players construct a deck if they're not sure what they want to commit to or not. But what are your thoughts on the miscellaneous cards? Which ones did you find appealing, unappealing, and unplayable? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. I saw a huge explosion of support for these videos. And moving forward, this is how set review videos will be. This is Digipanda, logging out.